Hello everybody, this is Dr. Carmen Bryant, the host of Redefining Yourself. And this is my program, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. So if you have not subscribed already, please go to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Carmen Bryant, with a T, and the channel is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse, where I do videos from Tuesday through Friday. I post videos and I engage in conversation with people on Sundays between eight and nine Pacific Standard Time where you can ask me whatever question you want to. I apologize, a lot of times I do put a topic up there and my 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 thoughts are to start on that topic, but nine times out of 10, you guys begin to ask questions and so I answer questions. So I leave it open for you all to ask questions, whatever questions, and even to support each other. And so I thank you all, all the new subscribers that have come to the channel. Thank you so much. I am so honored that you will come to my channel and find something relevant to your questions, your inquiry, or even your um, understanding of narcissist abuse. And I think as we grow this community, we grow this support, uh, you guys are supporting each other, uh, each other, and I think it is wonderful. You guys feel validated. Many of you are saying that I don't feel crazy anymore, and there are other people that have been through what I've been through, absolutely. Uh, thank you guys also. I have a Facebook uh, page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. That is my professional page, uh, because I'm also a licensed mental health counselor in the state of Washington, you're also welcome to um, to like the page because I post the videos on both um, both pages on YouTube channel and on my Facebook page. Um, and a lot of times I may post things on the Facebook when there are events coming up or speaking engagements that I may have that you are welcome to join. Also, I have also opened up um, appointments. I have slots available for those of you that are interested in coaching. Um, I know I've sent out emails, so if you have not received an email and you have inquired, please email me, Dr. Carmen Bryant, D-R-C-A-R-M-E-N-B-R-Y-A-N-T at Outlook dot com and I will send you some information on coaching. It is a fee for service. I am a fee for service provider both in my private practice and in my coaching practice. And so if you want services, um, please know that uh, the amount of people that are coming and emailing me now has really, um, it's a lot of emails, a lot of people. I try to do my best to look at some of the topics you want me to talk about. I do go through and I do have a monitor that monitor that will monitor my face not my Facebook but my YouTube channel so for those of you that get offended by some of the comments people make we make sure that um, we take care of that and please know that uh, the YouTube channel and on everyone's YouTube channel that is their personal YouTube channel that they use and they create to put out information and so if you're trying to get people to come to your page that's not a good thing to do on someone else's page kind of makes you look bad so uh, but you know I do monitor that as well if you self promote yourself you know there's a difference if those of you that are coaches or need uh, to put out information you're welcome to do that because we are a supportive community you guys do where we have authors we have people that are uh, editors that are on here and so i do you know uh, i always say please connect with each other but please don't promote something that is opposite than what I talk about. And so I, I do study, I do think about what I'm gonna talk about. So for anyone to go off my topic, you know, you have to create your own page. And so I try to keep people focused on specific topics and specific questions that come through. And I try to be very mindful at the fact that I'm dealing with people with broken hearts and broken minds, broken families, broken dreams. And so I try to be very careful with that. And so I don't like for people to come on and, and injure people even more. But what I've noticed is that a lot of the YouTubers that are on there are quick to speak up for themselves. So I'm very happy and thank you for all the kings that have joined me on the YouTube channel uh, and those of you that are willing to express and talk about what you went through and you're letting the women, the queens know that it's not just the queens that have went through, it's just not a woman thing, it is a man thing as well. And men are now coming and speaking up about um, their experience with a narcissistic female. And so today, I'm not going to stay on long because I do have to leave. We have a late start, so the snow has melted enough for us to get out the house, and schools are open again, and so I just wanted to come on really quick before I left uh, and got into my office. When I get in the office, I know I'll be busy today. Um, I do also want you guys to know that um, I will also be doing... Um, training uh, when I say training I will have you will have the availability or you will have the opportunity to um, pay for specific training dealing with different things and I'm going to begin to speak to people within the community I want to talk to judges or lawyers and 
police officers and advocates and people that have been through these things that what kind of advice can they give? You know, what can they tell you? Uh, they can't give you legal advice, but they can give you some ideas when it comes to dealing with um, abusers and to find out whether they know about narcissist abuse. Also, stay tuned because I also would like to begin a newsletter and a magazine. Uh, my book should be coming out soon. I just sent it back to the editor again. Uh, so for those of you who have written a book, you do understand that I had to send it back to the editor again. So hopefully within the next few months, my book will be out so that you guys can purchase it. It is a book um, about um, uh, about narcissism and the experiences people have had with the abuser. Um, and also um, it does give a um, biblical reference to encouragement in the book. For those of you that are interested in the book, I will let you know when it's out. Okay, so today... I just want to come on really quick and I wanted to discuss uh, one of the subscribers did ask about sibling abuse. And so uh, what what you know, what what do you do when you have the sibling? And I think she said I think she posted the question um, on uh, one of the uh, videos. I wasn't sure which video. And please forgive me. I do not recall who asked the question, <clears throat> excuse me, who asked the question. Um, but I know the question was, uh, you know, what do you, what do you do when you have a sibling that's a narcissist? Uh, and, and they're really pursuing you or every time you try to get away from them, they're just right there. Uh, well, number one, do understand that, you know, a lot of people do come from homes that have narcissistic parents or even narcissistic siblings. That is possible. And remember everything that we've talked about here on this channel or what you've you know heard on other channels about narcissism applies to the sibling the difference is there's a family bond there is a family bond and a family like a family obligation to protect each other of course you know siblings should protect family and so you should protect your siblings you should cover and make sure that they're taken care of you know that's that's family you don't let anybody in to hurt family but what if the enemy is within and not without. And when I say the enemy is within, when you have a person with a mental health disorder, yes, you're supposed to be compassionate, but what if that mental health disorder is narcissism? And narcissism, as you see, um, whether in a intimate relationship, friendship, or in parental roles, uh, or in authority roles, uh, is very vicious because they, so it doesn't change just because they're a sibling. It doesn't change what they're doing. They're still doing the same thing that they would be doing even in an intimate relationship. And so the thing about it is, is that the source of supply for them, sources of supply is right in the family. It's always there. And so you become a target and they will abuse you. And it's, it's almost like a love hate relationship. I love my sister or brother. Uh, at the same time, I hate my sister and brother, you know, and so, but you're constantly around this. Now, once you grow up and you grow out of the family, it's still a, a deep obligation for fans. It's a deep up for some people. It's just a deep obligation for family. You know, that's my family. And I need to make sure that I love my family, my family, but you have to remember you're dealing with a person just like we talk about an intimate relationship. You're dealing with a person that does not have the capacity to bond with people. They don't have the capacity to feel empathy or compassion for other people. And so they could care less about your feelings. They just want to make sure that you feed them, that you feed that narcissistic self, you know, and so you are also a target as a sibling. Um, the sad thing, and, and I know most people is really hard, even in a clinical setting when I, when I talk to them, okay, this is now a matter of your well-being, your mental and emotional well-being. And it's hard. Yes. Uh, I think the, the thing was, it's hard to get away from your sibling because they're just right up, right, right on you. And then, you know, one minute you, 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 it's almost like you break up with your sibling. The next minute you guys are back together. Next minute you tell them to get out. Then the next minute they're back. They're, they're wooing you, but you're my sister, you're my brother. And you know, we're family. They will use these things. Think about it. If, if a narcissist use these things to, um, trauma bond and to get their, um, you know, the survivor or the victim, you know, male or female to get you into the cycle of keep coming back, keep coming back. That's the exact same thing that a sibling does. The sibling just happens to use family bonds, you know, but we're, we're supposed to be family. And, and when you finally get away and stand up for yourself and put boundaries up, the one thing that you'll notice a lot, even whether you do it with your parents, if parents are narcissistic, or if you do it with your siblings, you know, normally the other siblings 
sometimes un un unknowing to them become flying monkeys. They become a part of the entourage. And so they're very good at convincing and pulling on the heartstring of family members because what are they going to say? You know, we're family. How can you act like that? Oh, now that now that you've gotten on by yourself, you got a job, you got a house, you got this, you got a career, whatever. Oh, now you're too good for the family. Oh, no, it's not that you're too good for the family, but the fact that you're tired of the toxicity that you have been exposed to. You know, if, if family is abusing you and you know, if and, and they're toxic, Toxic, you know, you have the right to put your guards up. You have the right to put boundaries up. You have the right to tell them, okay, you're not welcome here. And some people are literally having to um, to distance themselves from their family. Uh, I heard one lady say that her family was an acquired taste. You know, everybody can't handle the taste of a family, and so she had to um, she had to distance herself. And, and and when it's safe and she was in a good place in her mind, she can only spend so much time with her family. Think, and, and, and a male said that too. You know, there's only so much time that they can spend with the family because the family is so toxic. You know, you have more than one narcissist and everyone is so toxic because they play into the narcissist game. And so the narcissist is always the center of attention. And so when you stand up for yourself or you put your guards up, whether it's a sibling or it's a parental figure, and you put your guards up, then what happens is, is they go to the other family and of course they begin to smear your name. They'll smear your name when it comes to people on the outside of the family coming in or when people have something nice to say about you, they always have something negative to say because they want the attention. They don't want you to have the attention and, and siblings and, and parents and, you know, those that are narcissistic or have narcissistic NPD, um, tend to uh, dissuade people into liking you because that's what they want. They want the attention on themselves. And you'll notice that that sibling or, or that parent um, also knows everything. They are the spokesman for every topic that they know. It doesn't matter if, if, if they know how to cook a, a, an egg, they are the expert at cooking eggs. It doesn't matter who you are, what country, it doesn't matter whether you're a chef or not. I've done this for so many years. I am the expert at cooking this egg. And so no one else, it doesn't matter. So if anyone else comes in, sorry, you guys, comes in and interjects something that's logical and, and maybe backed up by research or whatever, they'll tell you, they'll give you all sorts of statistics or everything, you, whatever they give you to get the attention back on them. They really hoard the attention to themselves. That includes your siblings. And the best advice that I can give you is that you have to determine First of all, your boundaries, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. It's the same thing that we teach when it comes to intimate relationships. You set up your boundaries and then you're liable to get discarded or you may have to discard, but you have to set up your own boundaries. You have to learn to say no and that's enough. And that means if you got to call the police on a sibling that is harassing you, you may have to do that to show them that you are serious. Uh, but just because their family doesn't mean that they have the right to intrude in your intrude into your privacy, to intrude into your life, to tell you how to run your life, to tell you what to do, and they're always opinionated. They always tell you what you're doing and what you're not doing right. Anything that you do that is positive, you'll notice um, they'll always tell you, they'll always downplay it. They won't give you oculates. They won't tell you what a good job you're doing. Oh, that's good. Oh, I'm so proud of you. That's really great. But there's going to be a but somewhere or, you know, there's always going to be something. Well, you know, I just don't have time to 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 whatever, whatever that you're doing or, you know, you're going to come to the graduation. I don't know. I may not have time to do it, you know, because I have a busy life and they're not doing anything. It's just because the attention is going to be focused on you that they want the attention diverted back on them. So they will downplay you. They will make you look bad. They'll they'll make you feel like you don't you really didn't accomplish anything. And so. Hopefully this has helped you. I know this is a short video because I do have to go, but hopefully this has helped you. Remember, you have to set up boundaries. You have to be able to say no. You still, just like with anybody else, even with your siblings or even with family members, meaning parents or parental figures, aunt, uncles, it doesn't matter. You have to set up your boundaries. People do not have the right, you know, when you become an adult, uh, even as a child, a child should still have some some sense of freedom and say. And I'm not saying say meaning they're just going to, you, you know, a child is going to talk back to you. You know, I'm, I'm old school. So, you know, this is my house, you know, but I do give them the right to express themselves, to talk to me, you know, and those are my children and you should do. And I'm not saying you do what I I do, but as a therapist, as a clinician, I say that children have the right to speak up or say things to express themselves. This is how many children were abused because they never had or they had a fear of speaking up for themselves or saying something. And even siblings, siblings were molesting their children. 
I mean, not their children, uh, siblings were molesting their siblings. And so you have incest going on within the family as well because you're an extension of them, because you're family. So you're an extension of them. So they have the right to, in their mind, they have to the right to violate you. They have the right to violate your boundaries. They have the right to violate your privacy and your personal space. They have the right to violate your body because you are sibling. We are family and I can do whatever I want to do. And this is how a lot of times in families, you find incest among siblings and especially if you have a narcissistic uh, um, sibling, they don't have boundaries. They don't know. They don't know what no means, and they, and they 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 don't believe in rules. Uh, you know, the rules don't apply to them because they are the special gifted child, uh, or there may be something about the child that is just gifted, you know, and they grow up entitled. Uh, you know, mother or father may feed into it, or mother or father may be a narcissist, so they may be that golden child in the family. And so just the advice to you is, is that if you have to cut off family, you've got to cut off family. This is for your safety. This is for your mental well-being. And don't let anyone make you feel guilty about it, including your family. Because if you need to get space and you need to get a, a, a peace of mind, you back up away from that. Now, keep in mind, they're going to smear your name. You know, oh, now that he or she has, uh, uh, you know, excelled or did this or did that. Oh, now they don't have time for us anymore. Oh, you think you better. Oh, you don't have time for your family anymore. Well, you know, there's only so much you can take from a toxic family member. And it's your right to be uh, uh, well. It's your right to have a peace of mind. And a lot of people do have dysfunctional families. And so they have to limit their time spent because they know that their family is toxic. And so hopefully this has helped you and this has answered your question in reference to, um, uh, you know, a toxic sibling. Um, if that toxic sibling is, is hunting or stalking you, you're going to have to apply the same rules that you will apply to an individual that is an intimate partner. You know, the same thing with a sibling because a sibling sometimes, and, and I hate to say it, they will look at you almost like an intimate partner. They'll handle you almost like an intimate, intimate partner. And you're looking like, you do know that we're siblings. You know that we're brother, sister or sister, brother, you know, but they'll literally handle you as if you're like dating them or married to them and you're looking like what is wrong with this individual well you're not crazy and those red flags are there and what you're seeing is real just watch the videos and you'll see your sibling falls in those categories as well if they are truly a narcissist. So help, hopefully this has helped and answered your question. I know it's a short video, uh, but I do have to go and I just wanted to come on and answer that question really quick um, in reference to the sibling um, that, that is a narcissist and, you know, some advice to you. Hopefully that has helped you. Please, if you have not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, is Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hit the bell so you know whenever I post a video, which is usually Tuesday through Friday. Friday. On Sundays, I am Pacific Standard Time, meaning I'm on the West Coast. And so I usually come in between eight and nine o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And I know that's different in different areas. I usually come on and do questions and answers live. So you can ask me whatever question you want. And of course, to support each other, you guys give good support. And of course, now we have monitors. I put monitors on the YouTube channel. So whenever I have to step off the camera or if I miss something, they will get the narc, uh, the narcs that are flying on or trolling trolls that are coming on. And so I want you guys to focus on the conversation. Don't worry about the trolls. We'll, we have a team together that's going to make sure you guys are safeguarded. So thank you guys so much. And I do have a Facebook page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. Hit the like button. And I do post videos on both. Sometimes I may not be able to come live on the Facebook, but I will come live on YouTube. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm dedicate myself to YouTube to the followers there. So just in case I'm not on, I always leave messages. I am open for um, consultation. I'm also open for uh, coaching. Uh, I have made some time available on my schedule, but the slots do fill up very quickly because I do have a full caseload in my private practice. And so if you are interested, let me know. I'm also going to be creating groups. Uh, and so even uh, gender specific groups for females that don't want to intermingle or co-op with, with males. And if males would like to do their own groups, and I will also begin doing training. So I'm going to develop some training uh, at a fee um, so that you guys and, and hopefully be able to talk to some professionals so that we can bring some professionals into the training and the uh, webcast. So you, it'll be a for fee that you get to be able to see them talk about specific issues as well. So thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you Kings for coming on the channel and supporting the Queens that are on here and sharing your story. Most men do not open up and start sharing their story about abuse because society makes you guys feel like you're weak. Well, you have emotions just 
just like we have. And I'm so thankful and grateful that you guys are willing to share because it gives us a different point of view. You guys go through the exact same thing, but it normalizes you guys to us. You know, yes, you're strong men, but men go through problems as well as women do. You guys handle it a little different than we do. And so we would like to draw off of your strength too. So thank you guys so much for sharing your stories and coming on and supporting. And I thank you so, so much. And thank you, Jedi. Jedi is on there. He was making some great comments. Very, very uh, um, a, a strong, strong man who talked about his relationship with a narcissist. And he's getting married in Jamaica. You got to invite the rest of the YouTube family. And we're going to come over there with our cameras and go live. So you guys have a wonderful day. And as my friend always say, go and be great.